Nowadays, there's not as much cleanouts going on, full house cleanouts, whether your integrator won't let you or the price of shavings. So, we might get a few things between cleanouts. So, we put a little checklist together on things to think about, whether you doing it yourself or, as many of you do, you hire it out. Talk about clean out checklists. So if you've watched these videos enough, you know that at Southland Organics, our main goal is to help you be a productive grower. We do that through our products and our education. So today's gonna be about processes. Plan your work and work your plan. This checklist, pretty simple. I'm gonna talk about a pre-clean out, the clean out, and the post-clean out. So pre-clean out, one of the very first things you need to do is schedule or at least find out when placement is going to be. I know the integrator gives you that, but you need to find that out as quickly as possible because you and I both know that they're probably going to come in a little early. They want to jam those birds in there to meet those contracts. So you need to get that and maybe plan a little ahead too so you don't get jammed up. So schedule, make sure you know when you're getting birds. And if you are doing a crew, if you're hiring a crew, you need to schedule your crew in advance too. Get that on the books because sure enough, you're gonna be jammed up. And if you do it yourself, maybe you need a backup plan of, maybe I should secure a crew just in case I don't get it in time. Some things to think about as far as scheduling. Equipment, make sure that your equipment is up. Get it up out of the way, get it all out of the way. And make sure the hoses, cables, wires, everything is up so that tractor is not going to hit it coming through. Get your migration fences up and out of the way. Get your crank handles out. All those things right there. Gravel. Scrape the gravel on the front of your houses, the ends and the front doors. Because you know as well as I do, there's going to be spillage. So if that litter gets down in that gravel, you got a mess. Go ahead and clean the gravel out. We'll take you just a little bit longer. Clean that out so they can get in and out. Then you can move, get that litter cleaned up. Then later on, we'll go put that gravel back. So scrape your gravel. Last thing is, take a little walk through there. You've inspected everything, but now inspect for, what did the catch crew leave? Are there any dead birds still in there? Did they leave any coat they peeled off while they were catching? Just walk through, kind of make sure all debris is up. Number three, litter management. Know where your litter's going. Does the catch crew need to know, is it going on your field? Is it going in your litter shed? Is it going to a customer? Are there any finances involved? If you're taking it to a customer, have they paid? Are they going to pay by check? Is the crew getting the check? Make sure your finances. Also, if you're hiring a crew out, make sure you know the price and nobody's changing some things on you. Do you pay before? Do they want their check after? So even in the litter management, before you get this going, know the finance parts. Another thing to think about on that last part as far as getting a crew, make sure they got insurance. They're going to go in there and tear up a house, and if you're now going to be a huge repair a month out, and you're going to be without birds, make sure they got insurance. You're hiring somebody to come into your house, that's your livelihood. Make sure they got insurance. You wouldn't hire an electrician or a contractor without making sure they had insurance too. So make sure you clean out crews got insurance too. They can do some damage. Now, the actual clean out process. So here's a couple of things that you need to think about when you're cleaning it out. Number one is make sure, whether it's you or especially the crew who doesn't really care that much about your house, is taking out litter and not part of your pad. So, very easily divots little small divots can quickly become holes and next thing you know you're watching that skid steer head out and you got litter and you got a little bit of dirt going out too and they'll start shaving your pan and you know what kind of problems can happen with that so check and make sure we're hauling out litter and not a pad then the big thing to also think about when doing this process is the end the end walls and the side walls, places that are hard to get up next to. It's hard to get that litter out on those edges. 
And just because you don't hit a block with your bucket doesn't mean you can't knock a block out. Uh, a lot of this information came from one of our big distributors in North Carolina, Smithco, who actually cleans out litter. He actually told me, you hit that hard pan, you can be two feet away from a wall. Hit that hard pan just right, and you can shoot a block out. He speaks from experience. So hopefully you've not experienced that, but something to think about on those processes of actually getting the litter out. Actually, something we should think about before is make sure when you get to that point that you have shavings on site and that they are dry. So make sure shavings aren't and the problem is, from what I'm hearing in the industry, is that shavings are hard to find right now. So you better schedule way out. You better make sure you got them. And if you don't, you know, you may have to have go back into that litter shed and get reuse some litter. And some people may do that anyway, too. So make sure that reused litter, make sure that composted litter is ready to go. It's set. It's been turned. It's ready to go. Now that we got the litter out, here's some things we need to do coming behind the post clean out. The very first thing you should do is walk that house and inspect. I don't care if you did it yourself or if you hired the crew to do it. You need to walk in there and see what damage you may have even done. I mean, it could have been an accident. You didn't notice all, a lot of dust and stuff like that. But get in there, see what damage was done so you can deal with it. Now, if there are damages and the crew you hired did it, take pictures. Ideally, get them to walk that house with you before they leave. So there's no question about, I didn't do that. That was like that when I got here. Either way, if they're gone, you can't monitor, at least get some pictures so you can then show them, hey, this is what was happening. And then the next thing is deal with the damages ASAP. It's gonna be a lot easier to deal with those damages before birds are in there than afterwards. So. Part of that's an encouragement to kind of plan ahead too so you can make some margin for these damages to repair. So make sure you do that. Last thing, get that gravel spread back out. We moved it out so we don't get a lot of litter and back and forth traffic. Now, dress up that gravel, get that front and end where you're going in and out, get that gravel dressed back up. So there's the checklist. And if you've done all these things, then you should be ready for your bedding or your shavings, or your reused litter. Now, if you wanna look down below, we're gonna put a downloadable checklist, PDF that you can download and do this. And we realize this, every house is different. There's other variables in different, different parts of the country. But if you'll document this, get it for your family, for your crew, for you, things you can go and checklist, a process that you can follow, then it'll be a big help to you. You got any questions on this or if there's anything we can do to help you let me know or if you've got any other ideas on some videos you'd like to see feel free to give me a call at 1-800-608-3755 or email me alan at southlandorganics.com until next time